Hey, y'all. We are so thankful you're tuning in to watch us online today. God is doing some amazing things here in Roanoke and at Church Alive, and we're glad that you're a part of it. Service will begin soon, but first, we would love for you to do a couple of things for us. If you're watching on Facebook today, share the stream so that your friends can join you in watching today's service. Also, connect with us in the chat and tell us where you're watching from. We like to know who joined us in worship today. Throughout the service, we encourage you to drop comments in the chat and share any highlights that God impresses on your heart today. We'll check back in with you at the end of the service and give you some next steps to help you walk into a deeper relationship with Christ. We have an opportunity to support the ministry of our church through our giving. If you want to give today, you can do so by going to our website at churchalive.intl.com. Give on your mobile phone by simply texting the amount you'd like to give to 84321, or you can give through our Church Center app. You can find and download the Church Center app in the Apple or Google Store, set up a profile, search and add Church Alive as your home church, and begin giving straight from your bank account or debit card. It's that simple. We are really excited about what God has to say through our pastors and ministry leaders today. Please share anything God impresses on your heart in the chat. We'd love to hear how God moved on your heart during the service. Our worship team is ready to lead us into the presence of God. We are passionate about praise and serious about worship. So get out of that bed, get off that couch, and join us in giving God a high praise. Enjoy the service.
church, everything that has come against this region, we push back, we push against it.
There's a course we used to do that says, I don't want to talk about him like he's not in the room. I don't want to talk about him like he's not in the room. And while I love this song, I introduced this song to the church. I like the first part the best because we're just naming the names of God. Yahweh, Rapha, Elohim, Shaddai. Now sing it to him.
spirit.
ministered to him. Until we've ministered to him. It's not much other reason for us to be here. Until we've ministered to him. Yes, he wants our praise. He wants our dance. He wants the cymbals. Amen. He wants the stringed instruments. He's told us that. We're to praise him with all of that and more. But he seeks worshipers. He seeks worshipers. Worshipers. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to shift out of this moment into prayer for Israel. And if you were on the, um, if you're on the mailing list, meaning the, like you're a regular attender, you should be in a little group called Pastor Communication Group. And if you're not in that group, you can let Pastor Sherry, Pastor Jamie know, and they can make sure you're added. From time to time, I will send out an email, things pertinent to what may be going on in the church, or in this case, going on in the world. And I won't reread that email, but there's, uh, there's some things in there that may help us right now because the world around us initially was shocked by what happened Saturday, October the 7th in the terror attacks against the people of Israel. And we need to be clear, this wasn't two countries deciding to go to war with each other. This was a terror attack against innocent people. You've no doubt by now heard the horrific stories and reports of entire families being slaughtered, butchered, the bodies of 40 babies, babies, babies found, many of which were beheaded. That is not an act of war. That is terrorism and that is a spirit, spirit of terrorism. It's the same spirit that was in Pharaoh When Moses was spared from being killed, it's the same spirit that is in abortion. It's the same spirit that was in Haman when he wanted to see a nation destroyed and had just about achieved that. But God had a woman there named Esther who, who said, for such a time as this, I've come into the kingdom. And it's the same spirit that was in Hitler who tried to wipe out an entire people group of Jews. And that is the same spirit that is in Hamas today. The Hamas charter proclaims Israel will exist and continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. So the goal is to, as they have marched in the streets and said, death to the Jews, death to Israel, and guess what? Death to America. It all seems to get chanted together. Now, we are not coming to prayer this morning out of any fear. This is not an hour. There's never an hour for the church or the saints to fear. Never. Never an hour. But as Prophet Lloyd so accurately and aptly put it last night, we are seeing the prophecies of the end times being played out before us. And perhaps it's going a little faster than, than you thought it was going to go. But I agree, we talked in private a little bit yesterday over lunch, my husband and Prophet Lloyd and, and I, and I agree that there's a, a one more awakening and there's one more harvest. Um, and then it's, all things are pointing toward the end of all things, where then Jesus will set up his kingdom. And what we're getting ready for in all of this is to rule and reign with him. And that's not because we're on some kind of power ego trip. It's because what he promised. So Israel has declared war against Hamas after the brutal and savage attack on October the 7th. Grandmothers, grandfathers in their 80s were kidnapped. Many are in as hostages right now. The Israeli government believes that many of them have already been killed. They have decided they're not going to negotiate at all. But they're planning to go in with an all-out attack, and it's playing out on our screens. Because of technology now, we can see war in real time. Again, this was not a military attack to take possession of a tiny piece of land. This was terrorism. The United States currently has denounced the terrorism and pledged support to Israel. And I pray, and we pray together today, that we will keep that stand. 
because there are those marching in our streets who have a differing opinion. Don't forget when you hear, you see in London, in Sydney, and in Times Square, New York, the pro-Palestinian protesters, don't forget that many of them are shouting death to the Jews, death to the Jews. Again, if you want to understand the spirit behind what's going on, go this week and read chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. And you'll see that a woman gave birth to a child with a capital C, a child, the Christ. A woman gave birth to the child and the dragon was there to try to devour the child. And when he couldn't get the child, he went after the one who had given birth to the child. And Israel is the nation and the people that God chose to bring his son through when he came to the earth. So Israel has always been pursued, always been attacked. And we know the end of the story. And maybe we'll teach a little more on that as time goes. But don't forget that when you see these protests in our streets on some of our college campuses, that this is the same group that on 9-11, the Palestinians were dancing in the streets and rejoicing when the towers fell and the Pentagon was hit and the flight went into the ground and over 3,000 people, Americans, were killed that day. Don't forget, I'm saying that because... You know, we've been preaching, <laughs> preaching about being battle ready. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea, but we are preaching from the realm of the spirit. Amen. And that's where we're positioned. Hamas has called for jihad and on Friday they called for a day of rage. And we thank God that it was no more eventful than it was. And I believe that's because of the prayers of the church. It could have been a lot worse. Jihad, it means a struggle or fight against the enemies of Islam. Just a little information. Um, you can probably get it all on the screen of your phone. But what you won't get is the spiritual war that's taking place. And that's in the heavenlies. Amen. And that's what we've been trying to get equipped for around here. Is first of all, pull down the strongholds that the enemy comes against in our mind. Then pull down the strongholds out of the church. Because the enemy does the most damage from within the church. Y'all better talk to me today. Like you haven't heard eight sermons already on this. And now, going to the heavenlies and doing what we did Friday night. Worshiping God so that the thrones that have been over the city of the enemy are displaced. They will be displaced by a throne of worship unto Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's why we pray this morning. What we're going to pray is Psalm 122. I'm going to be praying it from the Passion. And then we're going to get ready to bring our prophet that's in the house today forward to minister. I know that he's overflowing with the word of the Lord and the gifts of the Spirit today. Chapter 122 of the Psalm. It's titled Jerusalem. I was overjoyed when they said, let us go up to the house of the Lord. And now at last we stand here inside the very gates of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, you will build us a city of praise where God and man mingle together. This is where all the tribes of Yahweh are required to come and worship him. This is where the thrones of kings have been established to rule in righteousness. Even King David ruled from here. Pray and seek for Jerusalem's peace, for all who love her will prosper. O oh, Jerusalem, may there be peace for those who dwell inside your walls and prosperity in your every palace. I intercede for the sake of my family and friends who dwell there, that they may live in peace, all live in peace. For the sake of your house, Yahweh our God, I seek the welfare and the prosperity of Jerusalem. And to that prayer we say amen. Amen. And Father, we ask you to guide the leaders of this world right now. We ask you to put prophets into the ears of, of leaders that are making decisions that will affect our futures and affect the futures of our children and grandchildren. We ask for godly, sound, prophetic voices to speak to our president and those who lead our military. For the same for Prime Minister Netanyahu and those who lead the Israeli military. We pray that that the enemy's plans and schemes will be completely exposed that their weapons will fail in their hands as your word says weapons will absolutely 
absolutely fail in their hands. Rockets that are intended, many that are intended from other nations aimed at Israel, they will fail in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, when it is your time, Lord, then I thank you. You will step in and it will be over. But until then, we're asking for another harvest. We're asking you, Lord, forgive us for our sins in America. Come on, pray with me. I'm almost done. Forgive us for our sins in America. Forgive us for allowing perversion to run rampant. Forgive us, Almighty God. We're asking for another great awakening. And in that awakening, oh God, as your church is revived, as your church comes back to life, oh God, there will be an influx of harvest in this last day. We ask for it in Jesus' name. Shout if you're in agreement with it now. Yes. are here I'll have a couple of announcements at the end and we'll give our tithing offerings and our revival offering at the end but I want you right now to welcome back to the pulpit for whatever and how long God wants us here welcome prophet Lloyd Bustard back into church alive this morning God bless Thank you, Pastor. Let's give Pastor Vanny a great round of love and appreciation for who she is in the kingdom of God. I tell you, she's a rare, say it with all due respect, but she's a rare breed. And I love, Pam and I love her, respect you to the highest, and the great apostle. Hallelujah. You know that one? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
learn that. You learn that because that's what we're going to play at the end, okay? I want to talk to you for a few moments today. And I've got a word that I've never preached before in any other church. And I know it's, it's very timely for us now. And if you will indulge me here, I want to talk to you. John 17. John 17. Jesus said in verse 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those who you have given me. They are yours. And all mine are yours and Yours is mine, and I am glorified in them. Now, I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of prediction. Down to verse 14. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. Listen what he's praying to the Father on our behalf. So I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. That they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. Father we love you and we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is already taking place in this house today. Lord, we thank you that the enemy is defeated under our feet. Victory is ours through the blood and through the name that is above all other names. The name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands to Jesus one time and you may be seated. Thank you. Amen. All right. We got to go with this now, okay? I want to talk to you for a few moments today. And the title of my message is Secular Versus Sacred. All right? Because that's where I believe we are. Do you know that the kingdom of God is the most radical conception ever presented to the human race? It meant nothing less than the replacement of this present unworkable world order. Because this present unworkable world order is built on greed, selfishness, and exploitation. But the kingdom of God replaces this greedy unworkable world order with God's order. God's kingdom that's founded on love and founded on service. Now, if you try to tell me that it's important for the church to be able to function within the society that we live in. And if you say, well, we've got to adopt it, its culture. We've got to adopt its language. And we've got to adopt its outlook. I will agree with this. I believe it's important for the church to know and understand the culture, the language, and the outlook. But I will remind you today that there is a big difference between adapting versus adopting. 
The secular is driven. This secular age that we're living in, it is driven by pagan urges. Did you hear me? To, to get on, to get ahead, to exploit, to accumulate no matter what happens to anybody else. Therefore, I say that if the modern demand for adaptation or adaption means adoption, then we're lost. Because I reminded you from John 17 what Jesus said and what he prayed to our Heavenly Father about. He said, now they're in this world, but they're not of this world. Now, we must love this world. We must love this age. But we must love someone higher who is more supreme in our life. And that's the kingdom of God and God Almighty and His, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because to merge, everybody say to merge, merge. is to be submerged. To merge, to merge is to be submerged. And when you become submerged, you have no message. Because to have a message means to be different. To have a message means that you realize that in your spirit there has to be an inward aloofness. We have to be conscious of the fact every day that we are different. We walk different, we talk different, we act different, we look different. Amen? Jesus ate with the publicans and sinners, didn't he? And then religious people comes along and they point their finger and they charge him and say, what are you doing sit with the publicans and sinners? And Jesus replied to them, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus replied to them and said, they that are whole don't need a physician. But they that are sick needs a physician. So here right there, pastor, he was qualifying himself of who he was and why he was there. He was the physician, not a fellow patient. You didn't hear that, did you? He was eating with the publicans and sinners. But he said, I've come to heal these people. I'm sitting at this table, not just, a good, just as a good old boy, but I'm their physician. And they're going to feel the power. They're going to know the power. They're going to know that I'm different. And that's why they're wanting me in their midst. Because I have what they need. To be universal... We don't have to be less Christian. Amen. To be cool, you don't have to be less Christian. Amen. To be cutting edge, you don't have to be less Christian. In fact, I'll tell you this. The truly Christian person is the most universal, coolest, cutting edge person in the world. And like I said last night, I will remind you again today. If the church of this age marries the spirit of this age, then the next generation will be a widow. Because this generation of secular was going to be succeeded by another secular generation. And they're going to have their language, their culture, and their outlook too. Because secularism has no fixed basis. It has no foundation. It's just going to get worse. <laughs> it has no fixed basis. Secularism is a result of drives, D-R-I-V-E-S, drives that ebb and flow and go the way of the pressure. That's why we must have something fixed. We must be in something fixed. We must have something fixed that's universal and timeless. And I think there's two things to me that are universal and timeless. And they are the reality and love. When you have reality and you apply that reality of Jesus Christ in love, you can speak to anybody in any language at any age. You're not disconnected. You're not out of touch. 
They want to be with you. They want to hear from you. Because you're not the everyday, run-of-the-mill, mundane person that's just going with the flow of the world. You're standing out. You're bold. You're wise. You've got your intellect anointed by the Word of God. And just like a Moses, you can walk in any situation and open up your mouth. And God said, I will fill it and give you the words to speak. I'm from Canada, and I go back. Every year, and you know, there's, there's forts in Canada where I'm from. And they're guarded by soldiers that stand there with their swords, and they have these long uniforms. And the soldiers are guarding these forts. It's amazing to see. These forts were once the center of feudal province. But now, these forts that these soldiers are guarding... They are, they're irrelevant now. And they're valueless now. Why? These forts at one time held the authority and the power of that slope of civilization within their four thick walls. But now the center of power and authority has been moved beyond the thick walls to the center city. And the center of power and authority now is in the secular city. So this fort that I go visit is in the natural now. It's irrelevant. It's high and dry. But you've got these soldiers still there with their swords pompously guarding that irrelevance. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's what the critics try to say about the church. Yeah. You're irrelevant now. Yeah. You had your day. You served your time. You're irrelevant. You don't have any values. And, and you pompously guard irrelevant values and issues. Let me just remind you something. The values that the church holds are the greatest possessions that God ever gave to humanity. They're not irrelevant. They're relevant. They're not valueless. They're the foundation that holds society together. They're the most precious values ever given. Oh, you may say, well, they're so out of touch. Well, they may be covered up in some irrelevant forms and archaic language, but when you strip that off, you will find that these are the most precious values that God ever placed to a human race. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happens many times. Our intelligence has outrun our character. I hear a little. There a little, a little compromise, a little sleep, a little slumber. Our intelligence has outrun our character. What are you going to say? Well, we have more power than moral character to handle the power. And the thing that stirs me up <laughs> is I look at ch the church. Soaring, cutting edge. I love all that. I love all that. I love the lights. I love the screens. I love the all oh, the social media. I love, I believe in it all. Because of the lack of moral character and a spiritual backbone, you may end up destroying yourself by the very instruments that your intelligence has created. The anointing that's in this house is special. So Jesus sounds the cry. Can I still preach? So Jesus sounds the cry across the face of chaos of mod modern civilization. And the cry he sounds is, Except the civilization be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Except the man, a person be born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless a person is born again, it would be better for that person not to.
there's a heaven to gain, there's a hell to And there's coming a day, not too far down the road, when we're going to stand before the judgment throne of God. And he's going to say, enter in, or he's going to say, depart from me. Except the person be born again, it would have been better for that person not to have been born. Because without the new birth, humanity is in image. The shackles fall off. The old you dies. You step into a new freedom. You're able to hear from God, walk with God, create with God. You live masterfully without strain or without drain. You're a new superior type of a human being because you're born from above. Think about that. And the stone that the stone that the builders rejected, the stone. The Holy Spirit that the builders rejected. Jesus that the ones rejected. Has now become the chief cornerstone. Amen. The stone that civilization rejected. He's king of kings. And he's lord of lords. Yes. Now here's the thing. Those people who try to live life in what I call anti-kingdom ways. Guess what happens? Their universe decays under their touch. They touch love and it turns to lust. They touch rulership and it turns to tyranny. And tyranny turns to revolt. They touch service and service turns to servility and sickle fence and slavery. They touch human relationships and under their attitudes of hate, and fear their relationships turns into conflicts and wars. Oh, Jesus prayed to the Father, don't, don't take them from this world. Jesus gives us the... Gives us the... He delivers us from the escapism mentality. Did you hear me? He doesn't want, he doesn't want us to find a cave and hide. He has delivered you and I from the escape, escapism mentality. And he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only to merely bear the troubles and sorrows and the injustices. And the unmerited uh, suffering that we go through. But we can, he said you can actually use it. Take all these issues up. For the purpose of your life. And make them contribute. Do you realize that Jesus took the first thing that could happen, the worst thing that could happen to him, the crucifixion, and he made it the best thing that could happen to the world, yeah. my redemption. Yeah. You meant it for good, but, but you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Yeah. So every Christian, they say, oh, you've got to be, you've got to, you've got to be made into the secular to prove your, <clears throat> your validity. Oh, you don't realize how important this kind of preaching is. So you have a secular congregation. You'll have a secular saint. And you'll have a secular Christ. Why is this going on? Well, because this is a symptom of the fading out of spirituality and the immersion in of the secular as the only reality. Why is this going on? Because this is a symptom of humanism yes. that is replacing Christian values. Yes. You see, our gospel is kind of ironic. It's kind of a paradox. <clears throat> because our gospel in one way is the most pessimistic of faiths. Because it looks out at life through a cross. But flip it over. Our gospel is also the most optimistic of faiths. In that it looks, we now look at it life <laughs> through an Easter morning.
Christianity is the only faith that has an Easter morning. The non-Christian faiths have no Easter morning in them. So they stay pessimists. Their pessimists lie like a paralyzing pall on their souls. And they're great people, but they're pessimists. They have no moral nerve to live. <laughs> I've come that you might have life. And have life more abundantly. And you know what's true too? In all ages among all people. Religion has been associated with sacred places. Think about what I'm saying now. You go to India. Go to the Ganges River. Millions of people intimately live around it. Why? Because they think it's a holy river. And thousands of people drag their weary bodies, Hindus, to the Ganges River, hoping to bathe in it and be made pure and holy. If I can get in it, I will be healed. That's a, that's a God river. Or if, I can, if I'm going to die, I want to die with the sight of the river in my view. One Mohammedan was on a train in India. The train was traveling. It was time for him to take out his mat and say his prayer. True story. Just to show you the passion. But when somebody believes something, he took out his prayer mat and laid it in the aisle of the train, car. But he had a problem because the train was going up windy turns through the mountains of India and hills. But he was up for the challenge. You know what he did? He takes out a little compass and he lays it on the floor of the map beside him and when the train twisted and he moved his head so that his face was always facing Mecca wow Jews have kissed the stones of the ancient temple so much that there's grooved parts of the wall from the tears of the Jews who cried the Indians of Latin America <clears throat> make these long pilgrimages to ancient shrines. And they go there. And they wail and they pray and they cry. And when it's time to leave, to head back home, you can hear the Latin Americans crying, Adios, Cristo. Adios, Christos. They're returning home. And they left him behind in the sacred place. How often do we put even Christianity on a sacred day? Sunday. In a sacred place, the church. And when it's all over, we leave it all there embalmed. See, here's the thing about making one place sacred. If I can get to church, if I can get to church. Well, number one, you're forgetting you are the church. The one negative thing about making place like a church sacred is that you inadvertently or unconsciously or consciously desecrate all other places. I remember reading in the Bible where God said, Moses! Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. It wasn't in the temple. It was in the wilderness. Why, Lord? Because the place where you're standing is sacred. It's holy ground. See, in view of this tendency, or this universal tendency to put God in a sacred place and leave Him there, 
Have you forgotten that when God greatest gave his greatest gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, he didn't give it in a sacred place? He gave it in a common place. He gave it in a home. He turned into the uncommon. He turned the common place, a home, into an uncommon place, a home. Your Christianity is not to be centered in the church, but is to be centered in the home. The whole, everybody say the whole. The whole of life is to be raised to the sacred, not just a place. The whole of life. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And the gift of the Holy Spirit, that's what's great about it. The gift of the Holy Spirit lifts the sordid into the sacred. We become thermostats wherever we go. We change the atmosphere. It lifts the sordid into the sacred and you and I we our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit and our home becomes the home of God and this was in perfect line with what Jesus taught because Jesus never defended the local church institution but he did defend the home in fact he said the temple will be destroyed but the home must never be put asunder Oh, I believe in church. I believe in going to church. I believe in pastors. I, be, I Absolutely. That's why I'm here today. But we can't make it a shrine. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. You see, you've got to understand and remind yourself, the hope is the hope. The home is the hope of the human race. And Pastor Vanny, I'll tell you, everywhere I go now, I'm thinking about this. Unless Christianity can be at home, in your home, no amount of religion in the temple is going to save you. Let me say that again. Unless the Holy Ghost and your Christianity can be at home, in your home, no amount of church attendance is going to save you. We must be able to take God into everything or nothing. If he's not Lord of everything, he's not Lord at all. To take God into everything, and take God. I close with this. I want you to think about this. We find our unity in Jesus Christ. This is so important. We don't find it in apostles. We don't find our unity in prophets. We don't find our unity in evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We find our unity in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3. Paul was dealing with people at Corinth. And some were saying, well, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Apollos follower. Oh, well, I like Cephas. Well, I'm with the Apostle Paul. Paul nipped that in the bud and it was so important because he protested. He disagreed with them putting their allegiance to people. He said, no, you're wrong. You don't belong to us. We belong to you. And you belong to Christ. (laughs) This was so important. Because this is one of the, I mean, really, here's where Paul broke the nexus of loyalty and pinned it and fastened it, connected it to Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. This is one of the most important events and things that Paul ever did for Christian history. Get your eyes off the people. You can glance at us, but you better gaze at him. But if you gaze at us and glance at him, that's sub-Christian. And that's going to be your downfall. You better hear me today, my good friends. The center of loyalty and building up of doctrines of men are very divisive. 
We went through it. Let's not go through it again. The Roman Catholics has their center on Peter. The Lutherans have their center on Luther. The Calvinists have their center thoughts on John Calvin. The Wesleyan center on Wesley. The Barthian center on Barth. The, the Boltmanians center on Boltman. The Tillageites center on Tillage. But they all are divisive. Because you're looking, <laughs> you're making a shrine out of a man. But when you center on Christ, everything unites. Everything unites. Come on, music. Everything unites. Wow. If I were to say to you, and go around this room, and this is important, if I were to say, what do you believe? We'd be open Pandora's box. And we'd all split. Because it's not what you believe, it's who you that's all he wants to do. Listen, listen softly now. Listen to me. When Pastor, when Apostle picked me up this morning, he said, I've been up early. of your faith you're going to run smoother you're going to be more efficient oil I felt it so strong I almost asked for a bottle of oil if you got it I'll take it Probably going to need another one if you got it. Yeah, give me a bigger one. Just, yeah, just. You look like a good assistant. Would you come and stand with me? You're so strong. God's going to oil you today. Fresh oil. Yes, Jesus. never been baptized in the Holy Spirit get it today it's a gift freely given if you're not saved get saved this morning I'm just going to come through and I'm going to lay hands on you today's going to be a very special day very special very special the oil of gladness is going to come on you it's going to heal your body in Jesus name <sighs> Amy the spirit of the Lord told me to prophesy to you he said it's your decision whatever you're doing right now with children whatever you're doing right now the Lord says it can be as great as you want it to be great as you want it to be and I think the Lord says for you to expand your horizons. Does that make sense? You? I wrote that in my journal like a week or two ago. The expand, it's on my class ring from my senior year of high school, expanding our horizons. And a week or two ago, the Lord reminded me of that when I was in prayer and I just wrote it down. Yeah.
I know my calling. I know I'm a prophet of God, and that's all that matters. That's, that's it. But don't put me on a pedestal. You belong to Him. The oil. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Keep reaching. Keep expanding. There's a building waiting for you. Children will come, the Lord says. I just saw in visions, I saw the oil of gladness, the oil of joy, <laughs> just being poured out. Things are shifting today for you and I. They're shifting. What was hard is going to be easy. <laughs> what was long is going to be short. Things are going to be expedited. Things are going to be expedited, I'm telling you. Oh, yes. The month of April is going to be a very powerful month for you. God just told me to tell you that April is going to be a very powerful month, 2024. I mean, it just, just anything could happen. Anything. Don't even be surprised if you're debt free all over again, April. I just know that it's resurrection month. There's an Easter in my history. There's an Easter in your history. He lives, we live also. Alaba Shakara Babanda Yada Mosara Babanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's your name, sweetie? Come here. Stand here. Let me see what the Lord's got for you. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Well, just, just a couple little things. God's touching your nerves and even the head, just touching you right there. Low blood in your body also, and God's healing that. But God says, I'm going to use you greatly. You go to church here? You must. You're here on a Sunday morning. God says you're going to be used greatly because you've got a heart for God. you got a heart for God. Well, the Lord just says, take a deep breath. Take it with your chest. There's just a freedom there, okay? A looseness. Is that right? Thank you, Jesus. But the Lord says you're going to be used. I'm going to use you in wisdom, the Lord says. People are going to listen to you. I'm going to use you to love people, to heal people, heal relationships. Whatever you're doing, the Lord says, keep at it. Keep at it. Keep studying whatever you're reading or whatever you're studying. Does that make sense? Keep studying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You married? You have any kids? One? The Lord says that whether it's a boy or a girl, I don't know, but whoever it is, he or she is mightily anointed. I prophesy that to you right now. They will grow very fast beyond their years. Keep them sacred. Hallelujah. Is it a boy or a girl? Girl. Girl. Hallelujah. Lord says she's a beautiful flower. Huh? Her name is Rose. <laughs> Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. The Lord's moving in your home. He's blessing your family. He's blessing your children. They're beautiful flowers that are going to blossom into God's greatness and God's glory. You ought to be lifting heaven up right now in Jesus' name. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, this is revival time. This is revival time. Everything is 
sacred. Everything is sacred. We're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out, blessed coming in. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you, you don't need no other style of song to worship. This is it right there, hallelujah. 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 All these beautiful young men and young women of God, I bless you in Jesus' name. Oil's flowing. Oil. Oil in Jesus' name. Fresh oil. Oh, fresh oil. We receive it in Jesus' name. Fresh oil. A double portion of it. The Lord says, fresh oil. Fresh oil in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Look at me. The Lord says, I've anointed you. I've anointed you. I'm gonna bless the work of your I'm gonna bless the work of your hands. Whatever business, I don't know if you're in business, whatever you do, the Lord says, I'm gonna bless it. I'm even I'm even opening up new contracts, whatever that means. The Lord says new contracts are coming. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, if you're a businessman or woman, this is for you too. Get your hands up. I'm prophesying to everybody right here that wants to prosper so they can bless the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on, take it, take it. You don't stop, don't stop. I'm not going to be a cheerleader here today. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Phil, right? Phil, 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 lift your hands. There's, there, there's coming in triples. You're going to have good workers that work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, the, there's another key word in the Spirit. The Lord says the oil is flowing so things will ru run properly. But the Lord says you're gaining momentum. You're gaining momentum. You're gaining momentum. You're gaining momentum. Come on, come on. Get out into the waters to swim in right now. Hallelujah. Sing it. Hallelujah. Let the healing waters flow. Hallelujah. I see oil over you. Do you like it? Yes, I love it. You do? I do. I smell oil over you. I smell it. What is I smell? But I smell. Huh? I don't know. I smell. I smell oil. Somebody close to me works with oil and I see here. I put on oil this morning. I put on oil this morning. <laughs> I put on oil this morning. Yes, ma'am. I have it behind my ears. And... <laughs> like we said, you can't make this stuff up. Your strength is going to be renewed. I'm going to give you the youth of the eagle. The youth of the eagle. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God's going to blow your mind. Going to blow your mind. I'm just waiting on the Lord because I feel like somebody here 
Who buys or sells oil? Huh? Well, you are a hard nut to crack. <laughs> See, we, we hear in part, we know in part, we prophesy in part. We bring it out of the heavens as a prophet and just give it in bits and pieces. But it's just up to you to think with your mind to put it together. Now, what do you do with oil? I make things. She puts it in our lotions. I make lotions and perfumes. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Mm. Where do you buy it at? The oil store? Um, Young Living. It's organic. <laughs> Young. I'll renew your youth. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Oh, come on. Get those hands up. Come on. Can you feel your body being healed? Can you feel your mind being renewed? God's renewing your strength, renewing your youth. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. your hands the Lord says great will be your reward because you have such a beautiful heart to love people the Lord says I've given you the gift of love I see you just loving people stepping out of your world and and even going to the ones who don't even get family to visit them the Lord says the spirit of the Lord says you go where the lonely ones are oh my God my God my God get your hands up Oh, oh, renew her strength. Renew her youth. Oh, bless her. Bless her family. Because she's so anointed of God. So anointed of God. Hallelujah. 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 son to you and I'm telling you God's raising him up God's raising him up hallelujah don't compare yourself with anybody just grow in the Lord just grow in the Lord go after heart after God 
You're going to preach. You're going to prophesy. You're going to win souls. It's going to be radical. Filled, overflowing right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, get your hands up. The oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. Oh, God, I'm obeying you what you said to do. I'm obeying what you said to do. God, you break addictions. You break demons off our life. You break curses off our family, God. Stand in your presence. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every joint is being healed right now. Every joint in your body is being healed right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. give you fresh oil over this church yes. so things are going to run smoother yes. Lord says you're creating he's creating new momentum here there's incredible growth coming here Lord said there's fresh oil that's going to flow he said look I'm praying right now that that there will be miracle offerings given for this church. Yes. Miracle yes, offerings. Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm yes, praying. Lord. I'm praying that every... Because I'll tell you something. When it comes right down to it, it ain't about building your dream on earth. It's not. It's not. It has nothing to do with that. It's about the kingdom. It's about laying up treasures on the other side where dust and moth doesn't corrupt. I've been delivered from things. They don't matter to me. All that matters is Jesus. That's all that matters. Yes, yes, yes.
something shifting today and tonight. I don't know what God's going to do tonight, but I know something has shifted today. Prophets confirm they don't confuse. And they point you to Jesus. You can glance at me, but gaze at him. Keep your life sacred. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands one more time. I charge you to go forth into this world and be a witness. I charge you to go forth and set the captives free. Win the lost. Open the eyes of the blind. Go forth to your neighborhood. Go forth to your family. I charge you, go forth and bring them in. Bring in the lost, bring in the backslider. There's a reason why you're going into a building program. Because the last celebration that we will be, the last festival that will be happening before Jesus' return will be the celebration, the festival of the gathering of the harvest. That's the last festival. And then he's coming. I will continue this tonight. God bless you. If you will just remain right here, we'll, we'll close the service from, from you being up here, and that'll save on a couple of minutes of, you know, the commotion of everybody getting back. Would you let God know again how much we appreciate the ministry? Yes. <laughs> Two things. Uh, if you, when you hear him say April of 24, if you don't, about to put a house on the market. I know y'all been looking over here for years. I'll let you see it before I put it on the market. And uh, we walked through it and we said, that's our house. But there's no way. We don't, we don't make the kind of income to live in, in this neighborhood. Are y'all listening to me? And the prophet had said, mark the month of May. Something's going to happen in the month of May. We ended up putting a contract on that house. And they just let it sit. They didn't decline it. They didn't accept it. They just let it sit. And they said, well, we're going to, you know, they're an older couple getting ready to go into a retirement facility. And they said, we're just going to, you know, see about some other offers, da, da, da. So we just said, you know, forget it. We were coming to revival service. Huh? Yeah, it was May the 1st. Nothing had happened. It was May the 1st. We were coming to a revival or a Wednesday night prayer. Wednesday night. And our realtor called and said, if you're home, I want to come by. If you got 30 minutes. And she said, they signed the contract. They're, you're going to get the house. May the 1st. May the 1st, the contract said. And uh, you, again, you don't make those things up. I, it did not. I mean, we had been just waiting, you know, like, okay, what's going to go on? Okay, well, we'll just move on. I'd even told my husband, pardon? No counter offers. Yeah, they didn't come back with any counter offers. And we had, you know, we had just, I told him that day, I think, I said, let's just call him and tell him to forget it. And we're just going to pull our contract. And, but it was May 1st. And God had said, mark the month of May. And that's the month that we got. We, we didn't move in our house, but we got our house. And I'm telling you, when I'm already like, April, come on. Hi. April, come, April, <laughs> come on. Man. And the other thing is when, you're, when the prophet is flowing like that and the gifts of God are beautiful, aren't they? The gifts of the Holy Spirit are beautiful. They're beautiful. And when someone pays the price to walk in their calling and they can flow like that, what he doesn't have any idea of when he said he sees miracle offerings. <laughs> How many of you chuckled at that one? Prophet Lloyd, once a year here for many, many years now, we have an extravagant offering that we title Miracle Offering. It's an offering for the house. This past year, this, this year it went all to our building fund, except for 10% that we give out to missions. And that's one reason our building fund has been built up this year. Some of you are still giving it. You break it up and give it all during the year. Some of us try to save for it, use our tax returns, whatever, and we give. So if you've not gotten involved in the Miracle Offering, well, it's it's been validated today by somebody who doesn't even know what it is. It's an offering 
offering for the house. And it's an extravagant offering that we believe God for. We put faith out there to believe God for a seed that is bigger than anything else we sow any time of year. It's, it's something beautiful that happens around here regularly. So everything the Lord has done, even from looking into my private time this week and asking him for fresh oil. <laughs> Amen. Because what I know about oil is you light a match around it. Hallelujah. So we got fire of the Holy Ghost last night and oil today. And if somebody says you got to get your own oil, you can't borrow mine. You got to get your, your own oil. So God is just all up in this revival weekend. And I can't wait for tonight. If you're here for the first time, let me say how much we appreciate you being here. If you're here and you stayed, then that means you're hungry for the things of God. And we welcome you. And we're going to try to get out to the front as quickly as we can and meet you. If you'll go out the front doors, leave us a card there to let us know about your visit today. And uh, we'd love to give you a little something on your way out. But we'd mostly like to, to meet you and then be able to pray for you this week. Your card will land on my desk. And we make sure as a staff that we pray over every name of every person that fills out a card. Also, if you're in the growth track, which is the way to get involved in the church, get connected, get acclimated here in the body life. This has become a real vital family here. The, the body of Christ is the body of Christ in the earth. We're also the family of God. And uh, when I look out and see Friday night, when I looked in, and I was Instagramming a, a two or three times in it, I'm like, my God, this is family. This is family family here. Yes, we're, we're warring together against principalities, but we're a family. And if you don't have a church family, the growth track is the way to jump in and find out about the church and about your place in the church. Today is step three, and we either have it in person where you can, it's by video, me teaching, uh, by and you, someone can show you where it is. We have a manual that goes with that. You can go back and take step one online. You can also take step three online. If you've already had step one and two and you want to take step three online, you can do that. Make sure you have your manual so that you can follow along and fill in the blanks. And then at step four next week is where you find out how you can really become involved to get on a team and begin to serve the Lord because saved people, serve people. I said saved people, serve people, all of the blue team got points for that. By the way, I didn't announce last week from our A-team picnic. Uh, we had four teams, red, green, yellow, blue, and I promised them bragging rights. So all of the red team, you're the winners for this year. I'll just let everybody know. Let me hear the red team. Woo! All right, amen. And men of God, uh, I can announce this again tonight, but you're going to be praying together this Friday night right here. No games, no prizes, and no food. Prayer. Holy Ghost and prayer. Men of God prayer meeting, 7 o'clock here. But before that, we're coming back this evening. And we're going to keep flowing in what God is doing here. Amen. So I just plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over you today. Have good fellowship this afternoon. Take some time to quiet yourself in the presence of the Lord. And let's come back tonight and let's finish this thing out. Welcome to Revival. If this is your first time, we're in Revival all weekend. God bless you. Give ushers are positioned at the doors. Give your tithe and offering this morning. Anything you want to give to guest, mark it guest. We'll make sure Prophet Lloyd gets it and we'll receive another offering for him this evening. We love you all. We'll see you in a few hours. What a great time we had together in God's presence. Let me ask you this. What did God speak to you today? Is there something we can pray with you about? Do you need to take that all important step of giving your life to Jesus Christ? Can we help you take that next step into water baptism or pray with you to be filled with the Holy Spirit? We are here to help you move into that next step in your spiritual journey. Please drop a comment in the chat now, and we will be honored to help you. Thank you for joining us today at Church Alive. We are so grateful we could worship together. We would love to worship with you in person. So if you're in the Roanoke area, join us at 905 Peters Creek Road. We would love to meet you. But until then, we'll be right here online, and we can't wait to gather again. As we leave, we pray Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 over you today and this week. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. 
Amen. So now go and apply the word that you just heard to your lives and make it a great week.